everyone, and welcome to this week's Dino Digest episode. Dino Digest is a weekly video newsletter where we answer questions from Dino users to help you use Dino better and in more creative ways in your classroom. Let's see what topic Maggie has for us today. Hey Tiara, this week's question is from STM Library. They wanted to know how to use Dino for different subjects, what the best use cases were for virtually in-person and remote learning. That's a great question. We've definitely touched on how to use Dino in a general kind of aspect, but I think it's really important to call out different use cases for different subjects like math or English or um, foreign languages. So I'm excited to answer this question and share some creative ideas that our customers have used for using Dino in different subjects. So without further ado, let's jump into that answer. All right, entry number 10 of the Dino Digest. We are at double digits. This is our 10th episode, which is really exciting. This is a great question. Like I said, we've done a lot of overviews of Dino in general, and so this is a great opportunity to apply what teachers can do within Dino to different subjects and how those can be used for different subjects. So I think the first, uh, there are a couple ways that Dino can be used for different subjects. I think the first way is to create specific blocking plans for your different subjects. So if you're a teacher that teaches English and math and maybe Spanish, a foreign language, um, you can create different blocking plans within Dino to accommodate for each of those different classes that you teach. So for instance, if you are going to be teaching an English class and you have a writing activity, you could create an allow only blocking plan within Dino to only allow students to access Google Docs, um, Microsoft Word, maybe a dictionary or a uh, research site that they're using and any other sites necessary to complete that writing activity. So creating a specific English blocking plan for a writing activity. On the flip side of that, if you have a math class and you don't really use the internet at all for math class, but maybe you have math games that your students do online in between different activities or cre create and uh, complete worksheets online maybe during those activities, you can go ahead and create a similar blocking plan. I would recommend making an allow only blocking plan to only allow students to access the, those math games or math activities that they're completing. So when you start each of those classes, Dino won't necessarily know that when you're starting English class, you want your English blocking plan to automatically be in place, but it's super easy to just start your English class and then go up into modify blocking and put your English blocking plan in place. So that is a great way to tailor Dino's blocking to whatever tools are gonna be needed for that lesson in that specific subject and creating those blocking plans for each subject individually rather than a new blocking plan each time you start a new class. And you can save those and those will be available to you whenever you need them. Another great way to tailor Dino to your specific different subjects that you're teaching is through the formative assessment tools that we provide within Dino. So using the question bank as well as the check for understanding features to tailor your check for understanding to what students are learning. So using that check for understanding poll to, you know, send out maybe during that English writing assessment, sending out a poll for students for maybe how they're doing with what they're working on and what they're learning. Um, on the flip side, if you want to create a little math assessment to send out really quickly in the middle of your math activities, you could send that out using Dino's question bank and create those questions and save those questions so that you have them available during every math class. And those can be answered in true or false, yes, no, and multiple choice. So those are really great for math assessments really quickly or English assessments really quickly or really any subject you're using because they are completely customizable. And then the last recommendation I would have for reviewing um, how students are using devices in each of their different subjects is through Dino's class history. So identifying, you know, maybe you have a student who is in both your English class and your math class, and you can see how that student uses technology differently in each of those classes. And maybe they're really strong in math, but they're not as strong in English. And you can see that because they're trying to access blocked sites during English because they're not as engaged and they're, they don't feel as confident in that subject. So that's a really good way to look at one specific student and understand how they're using devices and how they're using technology in those different subjects and maybe start a conversation about why they're 
off task more in English than math and, and what kind of needs to be fixed there um, to make them a little more engaged and passionate in one subject versus another. And then also just looking at your different classes um, in an aggregate sense to understand how technology is being used throughout those class periods um, from all of your students and maybe what tools they're using more, what tools they're using less, and what you could refine with that tool um, usage for whatever subject you are teaching. I think one great thing about Dino is it's not made specifically for English classes or math classes or uh, foreign language classes, but it is really customizable so that you can use it to drive whatever instruction you are doing and whatever you are teaching so that you are maximizing devices and teaching effectively with technology in the classroom in each of those different subjects. So I hope that provides a good answer to your question and provides you with some ideas for how you can tailor Dino to fit each of the subjects that you might be teaching and share ideas with teachers. As always, if you have any questions about how to use Dino in the classroom and would like us to do a Dino Digest episode on it, we are always looking for new questions. So go ahead and comment on this video or any other Dino Digest video, and we'd be happy to answer your question. We'll see you next week.